Hello, it's Keith here, and welcome to one of my Hello World series of 68,000 assembly tutorials. Today we're going to be looking at how to do a super simple Hello World on the Atari ST. Now, the Atari ST is a great little system if you're looking to program. It's got a nice easy bitmap screen to use, but today we're not going to be using that bitmap screen. We're going to go even simpler and use basically the operating system just to get some very simple text on the screen. If you want to see something more advanced, then please see my other series, the platform specific series, where we looked at bitmap graphics. But today we're going to go right from the beginning. We're going to get a hello world message on the screen. We're going to compile it, and then we're going to see how we can get that loaded in an emulator. And the idea of this is if you want, you can just download my tools and just run my scripts and get it to run automatically. But if you're looking to do things yourself with your own assembler, a different assembler to mine, or a different emulator, I'm going to tell you the bits that I do, and hopefully that'll help you get started with your own assemblers and emulators as you, as you want. So, Let's go over and have a look at today's example running and prove that I can actually get something working. So here's today's code. We're going to have a look at it in just a moment, but first let's fire it up and see it in action. Okay, so here's my emulator. If I just double click on this prog.tos, you can see we've got a hello world message. And if I press a key, it will actually return. Okay. So let's have a look at the code and we'll discuss how this code actually works. Now, in the other tutorial, we created a graphics screen and we used that graphics screen to show our hello world message to the screen. Now, before we used graphics, but this time we're using the operating system GemDOS as it's called, and we're getting GemDOS to print one character at a time to the screen. And then we're extending on that in my tutorials, we always create a print string routine that uses a character 255 terminated string and shows the hello world message to the screen in that way. So when it comes to the Atari ST, you can see here we're starting with a section defined as text, which is actually code. I know that seems very strange to me, but that's the way it works. The, um, the, the, the code section is referred to as text in this case. And then we're loading the address of message and using this print string routine here. Then we're moving down a line. Now the print string routine just loops throughout the address it was given, printing everything with print chart until it gets to a 255, at which point it returns. So all of the work really is being done by the print char routine. So let's take a look at that. Now, with regards to this example, we're using a gemdos call. Now these are referred to as traps. Now trap one is gemdos. And when it comes to gemdos, gemdos has a variety of commands. So we need to specify what command we would need to run. And we want to use con out, console out, which is command number two. The way we can select command number two is we push a byte, is we push a word onto the stack before we run the trap. And so we push a two onto the onto the stack and call the trap here. And that will tell gemdos we want to do a console out. We also need to push the word that we want to show, which is a single character. And so we push that on just here. We are removing the top byte, keeping only the low byte here, just because I'm only working in ASCII here. So we push the character on first, then we push the command number here, and then we call trap one and that will effectively show the character to the screen and return to our code here. But although we've pushed two items on the stack and they've been used by the trap, it hasn't actually removed them from the stack. So we need to remove them from the stack before we return. Now we pushed two bytes here and two bytes here. So that's a total of four bytes and that's why we're popping them off just here. So that's our print character routine using trap one gemdos command number two. But you'll see there's another trap one here, gemdos again, and this time we're using command one, which is console in. And this is effectively waiting for us to press a key. You see, we want to be able to see what's going on. If we don't put anything in here and we just return, then um, you know we're, we're just gonna have this blink up for a fraction of a second. We won't have a clue what happened. Now, one of the option could be we could do an infinite loop, but that's not going to be particularly nice to our operating system. And uh, for such a simple example, that seemed a bit excessive. So um, we're just returning to the operating system here after a quick pause. Now, after we've printed our string, we are just doing a new line here, but that's very straightforward. We just use the print char routine to do a character 13 and a character 10. So that's really all there is to it. Now, if you want to know more about these traps, then um, you'd have to get the Atari documentation. There's various manuals that cover all of the traps because each trap needs different parameters and each one does different things. So without checking the extensive documentation, you, you're not going to be able to easily use these. There's not easily going to be a quick cheat sheet that's going to help you out with every trap you're going to possibly need. Now that said, I've not really needed them at all. I do everything direct to the hardware in my tutorials where it's possible. So um, I think the only time I needed the trap was maybe for the joystick. Everything else you didn't need it for. So uh, as I say, the traps, if you need them, you're going to have to check the manuals. But if you 
do things direct to the hardware, then you, you won't need that kind of reference material and you can just look at the manuals for the hardware instead, which is the way I prefer to do things. So that's how we're able to write a program to show a hello world message onto the screen. Pretty straightforward, really. So that's everything to the basic hello world. Now, of course, the next challenge is once we've got a program that works, how do we compile it? Now, I'm using this Vasm AST script here, which is what I executed when I pressed F6 earlier. You can, of course, download all these scripts from my website, but if you want to create your own or just want to know how it works, we're going to go over that now. So we're compiling with Vasm here, and we are specifying a source file, the ASM file just here. This is a variable in the batch file here called build file, but that would actually be your hello world.asm. We're telling the assembler to check labels. This is where if we've made a mistake and um, put in a label that looks very suspiciously like a command, that's going to cause terrible, terrible results. So um, the, uh, the assembler will warn us that we've probably done something quite silly and just allow us to avoid some debugging time. I'm also disabling case sensitivity. That's something that helps me out. There's a symbol here that just defines VASM as one. Now this is in case I decide to move assemblers later and I need to do conditional areas for certain assemblers. It's not used at the moment though, but it's in there. I'm outputting a listing file. These are very handy if you're having problems with your code. Maybe your code isn't working as you expect and you're suspicious maybe the assembler's not working right or you don't quite understand how the com commands are compiling. I found, um, for example, that the code is being heavily optimized by Vasim and I didn't realize. And sometimes if you're using complex calculations with regards to labels, the um, second compiler pass may be beginning confused and those calculations may not be coming out how you think they should be. So um, having a listing is handy if you're getting quite advanced at things, but if you're just starting out, it's not something you need. So if your assembler offers that kind of thing, it's worth having, but not necessarily vital. I'm defining an extra symbol here, build AST. This is for my multi-platform code. You won't need that for the basic example, but the next example might use it. Next, we're specifying we want to build an ELF file. This is a linker file. We're going to look at how to work with that in the moment. And we're outputting the file name as prog.elf. OK, so an ELF file, assuming it compiled OK, isn't executable by our emulator. It's a mid-bridging file. And so we need to now use our linker to convert that into an ELF. Vasm also has a linker called vlink, and that's what we're using here. So we're specifying the source L file, and we're outputting a TOS file, and we're specifying the file format as Atari TOS. Now, if this stage went okay, this one probably will as well. And once we've done that, we end up with a valid TOS file. Okay, so how do we actually execute that file on our emulator? Well, let's go over to our other screen and take a look. So, once we've got our file, we now need to configure our emulator accordingly. And so what I've done is I've edited the script of the um, emulator, the Steam emulator, and I've specified to use a hard drive to give that drive letter C and to use a folder on my machine as that hard drive. So by this doing this, all I need to do is assemble my file to a file on my hard drive. And when the emulator starts, the C drive will show that file, which is what you saw. Now, in addition to that, we can use save states, and that's what I'm doing here. I've got a backup save state, a backup any file, just in case things get messed up. So I'm restoring them here, and then I'm starting my emulator, and that starts up in the position you saw just a moment ago, and you'll see it in just a moment now with the more advanced example we're going to do here. So apart from the basic Hello World in this series, I always show a slightly more advanced example where I show some early monitoring tools that are basically what are my lifeline when I get started, and if they help me, I'd like to give them to you, so maybe they'll help you as well. So what they are is a monitor. This shows the contents of all our registers. It's quite handy if you want to maybe test some of those other trap commands, you know, see the results from them or check that the data you're passing to them is what you think it is. And this monitor will just show all the registers. And then we've got a memdump command, and this outputs the value of an area of memory. And so again, if you're testing hardware or if you're want to check a program still in memory and not got corrupted or check the contents of the stack, this can be quite helpful. So we're just dumping a range of memory just here. So let's fire this up and have a look. So again, F6. Now I am just specifying that batch file we just saw. And here's our emulator loaded up with that snapshot. And you can see I've already got prog TOS on screen and ready to run. So if I just double click it, you can see we've still got our hello world message. We've now got a set of registers, all D0 to D7, A0 to A7, the program counter and the condition control register. And you can see there's a bank of memory here, and it says you cannot place this 
icon over another. So we've obviously dumped part of the operating system there. So quite interesting. Maybe we could scan around, look for some interesting messages in there or something. As I say, if your if your emulator's got better debugging tools, you're probably going to want to use those. But for me, I prefer to have something that I know will work in a consistent way on all the systems. And this is a basic debugger that I wrote myself. So it, it's always going to be there. And it's kind of the challenge for me to get it running on every system as I try and take on a new system. So um, that, that's what I enjoy doing. So there we go. So we've looked at how to build a simple Hello World, how to do some simple monitoring tools that you can get from my website and try out yourself. And also we've learned how to build a file and run it on an emulator. I hope you found this interesting. As I say, the Atari ST is a great little system to get started on. It's got a nice simple bitmap screen, nothing quite as complex as the Amiga. So if you're looking for something to get started with, it's a great solution. If you want a different system though, I'm going to be covering lots of other systems in these Hello World series on these 68,000 machines, so please follow along for that. Anyway, I really hope you've enjoyed this lesson. Please download all the sources and give it a go yourself. Um, anyway, whatever you do, I hope you're going to enjoy programming and I hope you're going to enjoy the 68,000. If you've enjoyed this, please like and subscribe because there's lots more coming, both on the Atari, the 68,000 and a lot of other stuff as well. Thanks for watching today and goodbye.